Hey, thanks for watching. Today we're going to talk about part templates. I just went through uh, fasteners videos, so that'll get you through the joint templates and how to set up different types of graphics connectors and stuff like that. Uh, this way here, we're just trying to do, uh, we're just basically trying to set up our, um, you know, you can set up all different things. You can set up leg levelers. You can set up, say you want two certain holes on the left side of a gable that's unfinished. You can set it up however you want. It's part templates is very open that way. If you just want any, say you want a data on something, you can set it up to do whatever you want. Uh, so basically you want to go to here, you go to hardware and you go to part templates. Now what we had set up here we have leg levelers, so if you click this here on the bottom, uh, we have the pop-up leg levelers, and it's got 10 millimeter holes spaced, I forget, 40 millimeters apart or something like that. Uh, so what you want to do is add operations to this part, but you have to, you have to, or at least should have it ran by as many formulas as you can. You can anchor it to a corner which also works, but it's not quite as bulletproof as a formula. If you get a formula perfect, it's way more accurate and stays where you want it to be than if you just anchor it to the corner. So I always try to push people to use formulas over anchoring. Uh, then if you really want to get into it, you can have it so that, you know, at a certain point, at a certain width, it'll, uh, oh, sorry, let's, for this just gives you an idea of at a certain size what it would be so for us you could see we have a lot of hidden uh, holes here because these legs are so large at a certain point you can't use these legs so we have it flipped to a different style of leg at a certain point and I don't know if it'll let me show it. No, it'll let me show it in a cabinet though. Let's click, no, cancel. And let's hide the top. You can see here, I got a little bit mixed up with my fastener, so I'm going to get rid of that so it's not confusing me. Okay, so you can see you have these holes here, and if I set it to like six inches or something wide, it's going to change it to three little peck holes because, like I said, I think at, is it eight inches or nine inches or something? They're not usable anymore, the big, the big pop-up ones. So there, see that? In 10 inches, it flips back to the bigger ones because they're, I like the bigger ones more, but the smaller ones, at a certain point, you have to use those like levelers. So that's why we have set that up. Now, <clears throat> let's go back to that menu. That's a very, it took us a while to set that up quite perfectly. So that's a pretty advanced one. You might how we had set that up is we had put all the holes where we wanted them and then we told this hide formula that if uh, width is less than 10 inches or sorry greater than 10 inches then hide equals zero and zero equals hide it so it's hiding that hole and then for these ones we did the opposite formula and then we basically just copied that formula to all the other uh, things. Once we got them positioned right where we wanted them, we had it flip it over to the smaller ones. Things like this, will, when you take the time to do it, it's such a game changer in making, you know, you're, if you're de dealing with this part of Mosaic, you're, uh, any time that you save in trying to remember which kind of leg levelers you can use at what certain size, uh, that you don't have to do frees up your mind to uh, do a lot better more high quality work than 
you know, trying to remember which kind of stupid leg level are you trying to put on there. So that's why we try and chase this type of automation within Mosaic. And you, you know, the, the amount that you can do in Mosaic is absurd. If you, if I spent three years specifically just trying to automate every single thing in Mosaic, you know, I guarantee you I could, I could automate one heck of a lot of stuff in there. And it would save me tons of time, but it takes time to set up. So, you know, just watch this video and I hope this helps you out in the future to get things uh, working really well for you. So for us, we had originally set up pre-drills for the left, every left side gable had a pre-drill five millimeter hole. That was about there and then another one that was about there. Since then we've set it up with custom parameters, which is, uh, again, it's a very, sort of um, how would you say it's a very tricky to learn type of part of mosaic but once you figure it out it's really powerful so you can add little pre-drills like this and you have to lock them on the corner so I've gone through this in my f formulas video but if you don't lock it on the corner it's just gonna move around on you so what you want to do is you select each one you lock it on the corner, lock it on, I guess, that corner, this one, lock it on that corner. So I'm not going to do this for this one. I'm going to create a brand new one so I don't mess up my current one. So we'll just call this test. No. Okay, so for the sake of op making things very obvious, let's start with this one so you can click any of these parts and add things to them so what I want to do is I want to hit left end unfinished and I want to add a borehole that is like five inches round and I want it to be five inches from that side and 12 inches from that side and I want to lock it in the bottom left corner. So we click OK, we click OK, we click OK. So to activate that you go to job parameters. You only get to use one, as far as I know you can only use one type of uh, panel fastener. So where did I put that one? The last one on the bottom. So test. We're going to click here left side view. You can see I got one big old hole in my side of my cabinet here. So you base you could set this up for any leg leveler is where this is, is uh, really the most versatile. Um, and I don't know if there's another way to set up a leg leveler other than this. So maybe I should make a video in the future about specifically how to set up a leg leveler within this program here so but you can you can add pre-drills for cabinets on the left side you could uh, let's try another thing we can go to pre-drills for uh, countertops park templates sorry uh, rear stretcher you can add like a pre-drill for a countertop laminate countertop You know, you can, so I should have some holes in my rear stretchers. I think I had that already, so it'll be, it'll be set up as a, where's my rear stretcher? Yeah, so you got yourself some pre-drills. Yeah, it's a nice, it's nice to set that stuff up because any time saved is just as win in the books, really. You know, you could really set up if you wanted to set up a five millimeter dowel to align the two cabinets left and right, you can easily set that up in there, set it up with a formula. And pretty much everything you set up in there and you activate it in job parameters gets dumped onto, gets dumped onto your cabinet here. 
So that's basically how that works. And again, I'm not sure if there's more uses for it other than some extra pre-drills, um, leg levelers. Let me know in the comments if there's anything else you could think of that you could use this panel uh, for. Oh, I should show you how to do a dado maybe, just in case. So you go to hardware and part templates. Let's say on the underside of an upper, so let's go base wall cabinet on the bottom, edit. I think I want to do it on the reverse side because the way my qualified tenon works. So you hit this little button and it flips the part over. I want to cut a groove. Just for example, the width is going to be bottom thickness just to make it easy. The length is going to be part length. The X is going to be zero. And the Y is going to be one times two millimeter. Maybe you want a groove to put your light balance in. Just a guess, I don't know. Maybe you could use it for that. Set your depth at 0.25 times 2 millimeters. Data logic I'm going to add because that will send the bit. If it's a 3 8 bit, it'll send it past enough so that the round part will completely clear this corner right here and that corner. So you'd want to have that. So we click OK. Click OK. So on wall cabinets, what I want it to do is do a dado on the bottom. So let's go as you can see, you got your it's doing it on the back, so we can easily fix that. Uh, it's doing it's also doing it on the wrong side. So we can fix that too. I know this is irrelevant, but at least it gives you a a real life use case of how to move part, uh, use part templates anyways. Wall cabinet. And again, you can copy it. So this is a nice thing too, is if you want it to be on the bottom and the top, you can copy, or say you'd copy this one and you paste it there. So let's flip this over and move it to the opposite face. Flip that back over. And let's see how that worked. Was that enough? Still on the back, but now it's on the proper face. So let's cancel that, cancel that. Now, if you have, what I have selected here is dados right here. If you set this to no, it's going to put all the operations on the same, on the face that it's sent out to the optimizer. So there's less parts to flip. This should technically cl be clicked yes in my instance because I do qualify tenant. So you should have this clicked yes because and then you just have to flip more parts. Doesn't mean it's really more work because you usually just hit flip and it flips all the parts in one shot. But a lot of my stuff is set up before I knew that. So now I have I'll have this set as no until I go through all a lot of my stuff and uh, re rework it so that it works on the right side of the part. So if this was set as yes, which it should be. Then, if I go back to my bottom, it would be on the opposite side again. So, I don't know if that, that may matter to some of you guys, but just so it's clear, I'll go back to hardware, part templates, wall, and really, Have this set at 10, so it should be more like 
one. Oh, times two millimeter. Click OK, click OK, click OK. There, so for whatever rich reason you you need a dado in the bottom of an upper, there you go, that's how you do it. Every upper that you drop in that is in this job, because I set it up in this job profile, let's do it again just so you can see. Boop. Is gonna have that same dado. So there is, I'm sure there's an application where that might come in handy. Dados, holes, custom tool paths. Custom tool paths are a little trickier to set up, so I just show it with a t uh, simple dado. And uh, yeah, so that's basically how you use part templates. And like I said, leave a note in the comments if you think there's another way that you would use this. And I'll see if I can set the, a video up for that in the future. Thanks for watching. Take care.